Good morning. Good morning. It is Tuesday, January 26, 2021. <laughs> I hope so far you're having a good day. I have been out for a walk and I've been able to say hello to someone already and so that always makes me happy when I can say hello to someone. Good morning, Diane. Glad you tuned in this morning. So I hope everybody has their coffee. Uh, good morning, Leanne, and good morning, Paul and Sue and Brenda. So good to see you and Donna. Good morning, good morning, Greg. So this morning I have my J cup. I have no idea who gave me my J cup. Let me just, there we go. I just, it showed up in my office once. <laughs> good morning, Lynn. And good morning, Elizabeth, and good morning, Louise. Um, it literally just showed up in my office, and I was just so thankful for it because there's a J on it, so I know it's mine. Anyways, it holds coffee very nicely, and uh, I'm very, very thankful for it. Good morning, Karen, and good morning, Joyce. So glad that you've joined us this morning. And Brenda, welcome this morning. We're glad that you're here. Mm-hmm. Oh good, Leanne has her coffee and so does Joyce. <laughs> so very, very good. Yes, yes. It's just so nice to see you all. Good morning, Ken. So uh, I've been spending some, a wee bit of time going over my notes from last week. Because uh, right, when you have a, a week long course, it's just like, whoa, you're taking so much information. And uh, so, I spent a wee bit of time just go, going over, I think it was the first day of notes yesterday and uh, picking out what I thought was really important. And I came across this um, quote that's kind of stayed with me a little bit. I've been mulling it around. And it said, the quote said, notice and affirm cracks, <laughs> cracks as opportunities for learning. Um, and I just got thinking, let your notice and affirm cracks as opportunities for learning. And, and I let it sit and I let it sit and I let it sit. I'm like, mm -mm. yeah, I'm not perfect. <laughs> and you probably already know that you're not perfect and you can't do everything. And, and that's something that I'm coming to terms with. Like, I know this, I just don't like to admit it to myself. I don't like to admit that I have flaws and imperfections, right? Because that just seems like it's a sign of weakness. I know that's wrong thinking. I know that's wrong thinking, right? The Lord is working on me in that. And, uh, or sometimes, sometimes you, you might have committed a sin. You might have done something in your past that you just feel so embarrassed about or shame or guilt or you just think there's no possible way that God could redeem that right we just and it's a similar when we admit our imperfections I'm just going to lower this a wee bit um, we just we feel so embarrassed right we almost <laughs> want to like cover ourselves up and we don't want anybody to know and we just can feel so unworthy it reminded me of this story that I remember reading uh, a few mm, a long time ago so I just want to share it with you and uh, I'm gonna read it here it goes it says a water bearer in India had two large pots hung on each end of a pole which he carried around his neck. One of the pots had a crack in it, but the other was perfect and always delivered a full portion of water at the end of a long walk from the stream to the master's house. But the cracked pot arrived only half full. For two whole years, this went on daily with, ma with the man delivering only one and a half pots of water to his master's house. Of course, the perfect pot was proud of its accomplishments, fulfilling the purpose for which it was made. But the poor cracked pot was ashamed of its own imperfections and miserable that it was able to accomplish only half of what it had been made to do. After two years of what it perceived to be a bitter failure, it spoke to the water bearer one day by the stream. I'm ashamed of myself and I want to apologize to you. Why? Asked the armor, asked the bearer, what are you ashamed of? 
I have been able for these past two years to only deliver half of my load because this crack in my side causes water to leak out all the way back to your master's house. Because of my flaws, you have to do all this work and you don't get full value for your efforts, the pot said. The water bearer felt sorry for the cracked old cracked pot. And in his compassion, he said, as we return to the master's house, I want you to notice the beautiful flowers along the paths. Indeed, as they went up the hill, the old crack pot looked and noticed, uh, took notice of the sun warming the beautiful wild flowers on the side of the path. And this cheered it somehow, but at the end of the trail, it still felt bad because it had leaked out half of its load. And so again, it apologized to the water bearer for its failure. Did you notice that there were flowers on, uh, on did you notice that there were flowers only on your side of the path and not on the other pot's side? That's because I've always known about your flaws and I took advantage of it. I planted water, I planted flower seeds on your side of the path and every day while we walk back from the stream, you have watered them. For two years, I have been able to pick these beautiful flowers to decorate my master's table. Without you, without you being just the way you are, he would not have had this beauty. Great, he would not have had this beauty uh, to grace his house. Beloved, in Christ, each of us has his or her unique flaws. We are all cracked pots. In God's great economy, nothing goes to waste. As we meditate on this story above, you recognize that no one is flawless. We have one weakness or another, but the God of mercy uses these weaknesses to demonstrate his love for us. The scripture says, in your weakness, I am strong. He usually turns our weakness to strengths so that we can remain in him and for him forever. And I just, I love that, right? Because we can look at our own insecurities. We can look at our own flaws. We can look at our sins and go, there's no possible way that God can use this. And uh, as I was listening to some music yesterday, um, a verse from Ephesians uh, 3.10, 20 stood out to me. And this is from the New Century Version. This is my youth Bible, which is, uh, I've always really enjoyed reading. It says, with God's power working in us, God can do much, much more than anything we can ask or imagine. I love that. I love that. With, with whose power? I want you to tell me whose power, all right? With whose power working in us, who can do much? That's what I want you to, I want you to put it in there. I'm going to grab a little sip of coffee. Coffee? <laughs> I need more coffee. With whose power working through us, in us? Yes, with whose power working in us? Who can do much? Yeah, with whose power? God's power. All right? God's power. God's power. You're getting it. With God's power working in us, we can do, he, he can do much, much more. Right? I'm going to read it to you one more time. It says this, with God's power working in us, God can do much, much more than anything we could ask or imagine. Um, I love that image. It's not us working in our flaws or insecurity or our past sins. I love, I love the fact that when we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And then he, he walks with us through that pre, uh, that process of restoration and healing. Like, I love that image. Um, this past summer with, uh, with COVID, I decided to bring one of my plants, one of my plants home. I only have one plant at the church. And uh, so I decided to walk it home and I wasn't holding on to it very well. And it literally like fell out of the top. And I was like, uh, Greg, uh, Greg Ford had given it to me. First of all, he had given me a spider plant. I had managed not to take very good care of it. So he's like, okay, let's try a jade plant. Um, and so when it toppled out, I was like, no, how did this happen? 
So I, I managed to stick it back in, but there was a little, a little leaf that had fallen out and I thought, well, I'll just put it back in the pot and, and it'll decompose and it'll, it'll nourish the rest of the plant, right? That's what I thought. That's not what happened. Let me show you. Hold on. So this is, this is currently my jade plant. All right. Okay. I'm not sure if you can see it, but see that little piece that's growing right down there at the bottom? See, I gotta hold it. It's so big now. This piece right here, see this? Okay, so this little piece here, see how it's growing? Okay, so I stuck the big, one of these big leaves, that's what fell off, it just broke, and I thought, I'll just throw it in the pot. It'll decompose, it'll be fine. Um, so I put that leaf in the bottom, and what happened? This is the cool part. This came from that broken leaf. I was so impressed. I'm like, oh, new life. Like it's not even attached to the rest of it. I don't know if you can see this. See, it's totally separate. And so from that broken leaf, from that broken leaf, when I stuck it back in the ground, this new life came. And that's what happens when we give... <laughs> our flaws and our insecurities, the things that we get, there was no possible purpose for, right? The things that we don't think God could possibly use. When we give them to him, he makes so much of them. God is able to do much, much more than we could ask or imagine. We just have to give him those things, acknowledge them to him. God, I'm ashamed of this, or I, I feel like the sin is holding me back, or I don't feel like you could use me, or this is an insecurity. As soon as we give those things to the Lord, He is able to do much, much more than we could ask or imagine. So don't let those things hold you back. That's the enemy whispering in your ear, saying, because of that past sin, or because you're not good at this, or because of this, then really, you can't really do much. Okay, no more of those lies. Ephesians 3.20 with God's power working in us, God can do much, much more. It's a double much. There's two muches, too much, much, much more than we can ask or imagine. Isn't that cool? It's so cool. Let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you so much that you're able to do much, much more than we could ever ask or imagine. When we surrender our flaws, what we perceive as flaws, what we perceive as insecurities, um, our fears. When we, when we surrender our, our sin and our guilt to you, Lord, you're, you, you can produce new life in that. And Lord, that cracked pot just felt like it wasn't doing its job. And yet you and yet that water flowing through it made beautiful things, beautiful flowers. And Lord, you can make beautiful things in our life too. And so help us to surrender all those things to you today. May we rest in the presence of your goodness and grace in your name. Amen. Amen. I love the idea that that plant, um, the water, the water flew, uh, flew, <laughs> came out of the pot and created so many beautiful flowers, right? Because it had cracks and God, God, God can work through your cracks to bring wonderful things in other people's lives. All right? I just love that idea that we don't have to be perfect. And in those areas where we think we do, God's going to be like, I can use that. I just let him use it today. All right, my dear friends, that's it. That's all. Have a great day. Like and share. Bye.